Hello and happy Saturday everyone. Today I have some surprising unemployment news and statistics that I dug up. I have some promising information regarding the next stimulus payment and I answer some of your stimulus related questions regarding PUA, unemployment, hazard pay, and paycheck protection. Now let's start off first with your questions. If you don't want to listen to this Q&A part from the comments, feel free to skip ahead like two minutes or so. I won't mind too much. All right, diving in. First question, let's see. If someone loses their job this week, can they still get the additional $600 per week unemployment through July 31st? Yes, you can still apply for PUA now through July 31st. However, I have heard many accounts of people waiting weeks before their benefits actually are received, so just be aware it might take a while. Unemployment offices are dealing with more claims than they've literally ever dealt with by a multiple of about 10. So moving on to the next question. Um, Crypto Cash, he asks, uh, once money is on your unemployment debit card, is there a time frame you have to use it before it expires? So I looked into this just a bit to be 100% sure, and I saw no indication that the funds will expire. I don't believe there's any kind of use it or lose it scenario with this. Certain cards can expire, but in this case, you can just get a new card and have the funds transferred to the new card if your old one expires, so that's no big deal. So I think you're free and clear there. All right, next question. Someone asks, uh, will the riots affect a potential hazard pay stimulus? So I have to make an assumption here. I believe they're asking if it's possible that the likelihood of a hazard pay stimulus increases because many cities have riots happening in them right now. Of course, I can only speculate on this, but I don't think it'll change the odds. If we're going to get hazard pay, this global pandemic we're in is probably enough of a reason. I just don't see the riots being the tipping point where legislators say, say, okay, yeah, they need hazard pay. I, I think the pandemic would be enough if it were to happen. As a side note here, I've read very little indication or support recently for hazard pay. I know it was one of the main proposals a couple months ago, but that idea seems to have died down as the fear of the pandemic has died down somewhat. All right, moving on to the next question. Does the new Paycheck Protection Bill still allow an independent contractor to use the 24 weeks forgiveness rule? All right, so this is in reference to the new changes voted in on the Paycheck Protection Program, including extending the forgivable expense period from eight weeks to 24 weeks. This rule changes the Paycheck Protection Program for everyone, including independent contractors. However, if you don't have employees nothing will really change much for you in this program. This is because if you have zero employees, the loan size is just based on your own earnings. So by default, you would pay yourself the entire amount in the eight week period anyways. If you're an independent contractor, I can't think of any scenarios off the top of my head where you wouldn't just use the entire loan in eight weeks. So I don't think it would benefit you in any way because you're gonna get the whole loan forgiven anyways because it's based off of your own payroll in every scenario I could think of. Maybe you guys can think of some scenarios where it might change a little bit. All right, that is all for questions for today. Moving on to the news. We have some great news from yesterday regarding unemployment. The expectation from economists for May was that we were gonna lose anywhere between two and eight million jobs and have unemployment rates as high as 20%. However, a new report came out that actually showed a decrease in unemployment from 14.7% in April to 13.3% in May. And this is mostly due to businesses beginning to reopen. That decrease doesn't sound like a whole lot, 1%, but that does equate to 2.5 million people who are back at work. So it's definitely good news. I suppose I am noticing a slight difference personally, just looking at my commute. For months, I've had zero traffic on my 20 mile commute every day, and it's been wonderful, to be completely honest. But I swear, every day there's like five additional cars on the road. 
I don't think traffic is going to rebound completely as many larger businesses are just having employees work from home for the foreseeable future. I know I have a cousin who works at a large bank and he's working from home until September. So nearly half of the job surge of May was due to the leisure and hospitality industries. These industries saw 8 million jobs lost in April and March but accounted for 1.2 million of the 2.5 million jobs regained in May. Construction employment also rebounded a significant amount by 464,000 jobs, and dental office employment rebounded by 245,000 jobs. This was actually the largest increase in the number of jobs in one month in history in the U.S. But there still are some concerns here. The concern is that most of the 2.5 million jobs regained were temporary layoffs in the first place. The total number of people who permanently lost their jobs still increased by 295,000 in May. So this is absolutely wonderful news, don't get me wrong, however, we still have a long ways to go. The question I asked myself once I saw this new unemployment data is how will this affect the stimulus package and the next stimulus check? And who would have guessed it? There's already plenty of comments on this by legislators. The general trend so far has been that most Republican members want to wait a while and see what happens before authorizing another stimulus package. And it looks like the good unemployment news is being used to say, see, all we need to do is wait and things will get better and then we might not need as big of a package. It seems like something will get passed, but when that will happen just seems to keep on getting pushed back. To comment on this, a senior Trump administration official was quoted saying, Republicans generally want to be patient. There's a lot of actual spending left to go out the door. The Fed still has trillions in leverage it can put on the table as states reopen. We need to understand what is going on in the economy and what new policies might be called for to best help individuals, families, and businesses. Later in July is the earliest possible window for potential legislative action. So this is a bit disappointing um, because just so many people are struggling right now. Let's just say something gets voted in at the end of July, like he's saying, would be the earliest possible. That means most people won't actually see any benefit from a new bill until probably around September. And then the last people won't get, you know, like stimulus checks or something like that until maybe October if it takes till the end of July to get anything approved. Democratic members, on the other hand, don't feel like now is the time to wait. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schirmer said with nearly 20 million people out of work and unemployment among African Americans increasing, now is not the time to be complacent or take any kind of victory lap. And Nancy Pelosi also said, now is the worst possible time to take our foot off the gas. So where I sit on this, if I were to inject my opinion, is to just simply never celebrate too early. I personally don't celebrate anything until it's 100% complete and accomplished. You just never know what's going to happen. Yes, unemployment is decreasing and that is wonderful news, but 13.3% is still a terrible rate of unemployment. I think the issue is comparing unemployment to the month before instead of looking at the number by itself objectively. Comparing 14% unemployment to 13% the natural thought is, hey, progress. But if we just consider 13% by itself, that's still a big problem. I mean, here's another way to think about it. If unemployment peaked at 13% in April, all the lawmakers would be just as scared as they were with it when it peaked at 14%. So look at it objectively. There's still millions of people who need help right now, and I don't think there's just any time to waste. That's just my two cents on it. All right, moving on to the last piece of stimulus check news. President Trump celebrated the unemployment numbers yesterday as well in a press conference, and he also mentioned his support for another direct stimulus. This is great news. This is great news. So this is a quote from Trump. We'll be going for a payroll tax cut. We'll be asking for additional stimulus money because once we get it going, it will be far bigger and far better than we've ever seen in this country. So, so this appears that Trump wants some kind of direct stimulus check combined with a payroll tax credit.
Just for reference here, a payroll tax credit gets more money to workers by dropping the requirement to pay the normal 7.65% of wages to the federal government. If you make $15 an hour, 40 hours a week, that would equate to about $183 a month you get to keep from your paycheck that would normally go to taxes. So it definitely helps. Some Democratic members are against payroll tax cuts because it doesn't help out those who are unemployed, but I could see it working pretty well paired with a direct stimulus check. So this is all I have for today's update. As a reminder, if you'd like to pick up two completely free stocks from Webull, check out the link in my bio. It's W-E-B-U-L-L. -L. All you need to do is deposit $100 and boom, free stocks in your account. Many of my subscribers have done it and sent me screenshots of their free stocks. It's pretty cool to see. Until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.